Is that live? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for that. You are just trying to get used to the system. We <laughs> we don't know how to schedule and then actually go live. But I think is that working? Let us know if it's working. Are we showing for you guys? Can you can just someone say if we are here? Here. <laughs> can we start? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did someone say? Works. Okay. It works. Yeah, that's good. So for those who doesn't don't know who we are, <laughs> so I'm Roberta. And I'm Duca. We are Brazilians. Yeah. We are repeating a sailboat for the past, I would say, almost 10 months now. I'm not really sure. <laughs> yeah. For who doesn't know what we are doing, we started by building a tiny shipping container house in the south of Brazil that we actually didn't finish yet. We are like 70% done. And we found our dream project that was a sailboat right before it was supposed to. And we decided to move from our hometown to Sao Paulo, where we are right now, in the coast of Sao Paulo, to repeat this sailboat that was sitting on the heart for the past 22 years. Yeah. So I'm gonna, now I'm gonna start reading the comments. And if you have any question, you can ask. And meanwhile, Duca is gonna start talking <laughs> as usual. Yeah. It, it takes a little, it takes a few <laughs> minutes to get used to the situation of talking to the camera without no one actually <laughs> behind, but with a lot of people behind, because right now we yeah. are already 537 people. <laughs> so it's tough in the first seconds, but our patrons know that after a little while I, I, I lose it up and then we, we have a really good conversation. <laughs> with this coffee yeah. here. <laughs> so let's start before answering these questions. We're going to start by answering some questions that a lot of people keep asking. Yeah. The first one, I think the biggest one, is the three months deal. Yeah. Because in the beginning we were supposed to stay three months in the marina because the former owner made a deal with the owner of the marina that we could stay there for three months with a discount, but... <laughs> plans change a lot. The, the thing is, uh, if you watch one of our videos, the intro says we are stopping building the house for three months so we can finish the boat and go back to the house and then we finish the house. The thing is, we are doing a lot more to the boat than we thought we would. And that's not because the boat needs more things than we, than we thought. I mean, like, a few things, yes. But we fell in love with the boat. And the place where we are right now, the amount of labor, of specialized labor is so good. We had much more information and much more machines and much more everything that's necessary to refit the boat where we are right now than where we, our hometown, that's in the south of Brazil that we decide to do more than we were supposed to do here. The original plan was just to fix a few things, put the boat on the water, take her to our hometown, and there we would finish the big re a big refit. But I mean, like, it's tough. Once you start digging, <laughs> you f it's, it's tough not to do everything you want. And as somehow we are managing to finance this through YouTube and through social media, we decide to do everything we want. It's just, it's just too much love involved. And I mean, like, it's just hard not to do everything you want if you are able to right now, right? Many, uh, a lot of questions people have been asking this week. One of the most asked question, I think, that was, are we gonna go back to the house? Why we are not in the house right now instead of being here in the quarantine? Yeah, before, we, let's, let's go to the quarantine. Then. Ah, the yeah, yeah, I mean, like it's it's like the big situation in the world right now. Uh, our main situation is that for the past two weeks we didn't go to the boat. That means we are low on footage to add episodes. That doesn't mean tomorrow okay. we are gonna have an episode. <laughs> we already have an episode for tomorrow. I mean, yeah. patrons watched already yesterday. Yeah. But we have an episode for tomorrow. We have an episode for the next week. But after that, we need to start producing things. Otherwise, hey, that's so cool. Uh, Think somewhere to read. Yeah. <laughs> we are not saying names now because if we the plan is to stay here one hour with you, we still need to do the rifle for the sunglasses. But thanks a lot for the donation. But we are not going to start saying names all of the time. people all the time no, because no, no. we have just one hour. So thanks a lot. We're gonna yeah. say she, thanks she's, for everybody she's scary. there. Yeah, she's scary because on our last live video for patrons we stay here for two hours three and a half, and something yeah like and three and a half hours and this video. to write subtitles in three languages yeah. for two and a half hour video she's gonna stay a week on the computer and she don't want that so that's why she's like cutting me so but, now, yeah but let's why uh, how is the situation of coronavirus now in brazil in brazil we have like around ten thousand cases 
in Guarujá, where we are right now. Like five or six, I think. Yeah, five cases confirmed. Yeah, we are on the apartment for the past two weeks. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, like 16 days, I think. Yeah, like yeah. 15, 16 days. We didn't even, I didn't even touch the door to go outside. We, I, we didn't go outside at all. Supposedly, the marina opens up this week again. That doesn't mean that we feel comfort to yeah. start going to the marina as usual. I mean, we might start going to the marina slowly, like a few hours a day, to work inside of the boat by ourselves and try to be as safe as possible. But I think this will slow us down. But that doesn't mean that we're not going to keep going. And that doesn't mean that we're not going to have videos. That's, that's not the plan, at least. The plan is tomorrow we are going to start going there because, uh, as you know, we are assembling our mast. <laughs> so we are anxious to put our mast up. And the plan is tomorrow go to the marina and to start working with Zedo Master that's assembling our mast. So we are planning on using masks and mm. stay a little bit far away from him and continue yeah. the, 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 the work. Yeah, but if cases start rising, we will stop going to the yeah. marina yeah. because it's our way of seeing this thing. It's, it's yeah. our belief if that we need to do that. It's not because it's mandatory. Right now, it's kind of mandatory. I mean, you can go to the supermarket, you can go to get like some basic stuff, but you cannot just walk around. You cannot go to the beach that we are like at one block from the beach. No one goes to the beach. No, but if we can go by car, park the car right on in the underneath of the boat, walk up the boat, walk inside by ourselves and then go back to the car and go back to the apartment. I think that's what we plan to do. So why we didn't go to the, the tiny house, to the tiny shipping container house, instead of being here locked inside the apartment? Uh, the tiny house is sitting in a land that is owned by my dad. It's a land that's owned by my family. That means that we don't pay anything monthly for the house to be there. So the tiny house is something that's it's comfortable to wait. There is no problem on leaving the house there. The house is not going to go anywhere. Nothing is going to happen to the house. But the boat, the longer we take, the more expensive it is, the more we we spend money on marina. And we, we want to get the boat ready to go to the water. And that means that if we go there, we are like one day of driving, like 10 hours drive to get there. And here, even though we are not going to the marina, as soon as we decide to go, we are like 10 minutes away from the marina. And, and we don't have material to build anything in the house and the stores in our city are closed. Yeah, the situation there is the same as here. And even I think more, it's more closed down than yeah. here, actually. Yeah. So if we go there... We, we cannot come back because the, the states are closed. Actually. Yeah, and, and like we, can, we could not buy material. We, could, we have nothing to work with. Yeah. And it takes a while until the brain shifts <laughs> in between the boat and the house. It would, it, it's, it doesn't, it, right now it's not the right thing to do, I think. And we believe that really soon we are going to start working on things on the boat that we don't need to rely on anyone else. So that's safe for us. We just drive by car, get there right on the boat, up the boat, down the boat, back to the apartment. That's the idea. We had bought some material before. So what are we working? What are we working right now on the boat? Yeah, we bought some material before the whole situation of coronavirus. So we bought some holes to change all the holes of the boat. All, all because some of them we are still deciding. The water holes, she means. Yeah. So we are planning on change the water holes and we bought material for that. So after this, we need to close the, the diesel tank. Yeah, just spoiler alert. Tomorrow is episode, the same regular time, 10 o'clock in the morning, Brazilian, <laughs> Brazilian time. time. We're going to have an episode about the closing of the diesel tanks and the water tanks. No, we talk a little bit about the water tank, but it's mainly about the diesel tank. And that's what she's talking about, that we don't need to go too much in depth because we're going to watch tomorrow. Hopefully we're going to watch tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we are still, in order to close the water tanks that we are pretty much ready to do it, we need to exchange all the hose because the hose are really, really old. And there is no point on not exchanging the replacing the hose yes yeah, some, someone said that I, I always say wrong that i say replay exchange but it's replacing <laughs> yeah in portuguese the translation is the same but yeah but we need to replace all someone the holes and all the valves someone asked if we are gonna have problems to get material as soon as the stores open we don't know actually because yeah. some companies are not delivering some materials yeah. because this the, the the city is closed 
they are just delivering the essential, food. the yeah. food and pharmacy, pharmacy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for example, for example, we bought a week and a half ago, right after we started quarantine, we bought a mask link because we are, I, yeah, we are right now working on the tanks and on the hose, and we are also working on assembling the mast. Yes, that's that's an episode not this week. Next week is about the mast. We are not done with the mast, but we have pretty much everything we need. Yeah. The only thing we don't have is the mess light, the navigation light, the spreader's light. And the support for the radar. radar. Yeah, the support for the radar we didn't order yet, yeah. but that we can do after the mess is in place, maybe. Yeah. It's better not, but if necessary, we're going to do it. But the mess light we bought already, we are just not sure when it's going to arrive because of the whole situation we already paid for. They're probably delivering this week, but when it's going to get here, that's a good question. Yeah, we don't know. Uh, what else? We had a list of questions, actually. Someone asked why we choose a uh, steel boat instead of fiber dolls. Before that, as might have some new people, that's 883 people. <laughs> Guys, first of all, we really appreciate everyone that's taking the time to listen to these two weird Brazilian people here that you never met. I mean, some of you met. Someone asked if we speak Spanish. We Our language is actually Portuguese, and I'm going to... Talk a little bit of Portuguese now. Espanol, <laughs> yeah, we, we can speak Spanish if we want. We live in the south of Brazil. In the south of Brazil, there are two, way too many, not too many, I mean, a lot of Argentinians, Argentinian tourists. So our hometown is basically a summer place for Argentinians. So uh, I'm going to so speak, speak. A, a little bit of Portuguese, just a bit. As pessoas estão perguntando por que, que não tem legenda em português. É porque, na verdade, eu tenho que fazer depois do ao vivo. Eu não consigo fazer agora enquanto a gente está falando. Eu não consigo colocar automático. Mas vai ter, vai ter quando acabar, passar. ela vai fazer, porque eu não sei o que ela faz, a legenda, e depois vai ser postado com legenda, vai ficar no canal como legenda. I was just explaining that for who is Brazilian or any other, or Spanish, because we do subtitles in Portuguese, English, and Spanish, but we do that manually, she does that manually, so that means that after we are done with the live, she's going to do the subtitles, so anyone that don't speak English can watch later, because right now it's impossible to do it at the same time. Yeah. I was saying uh, something before that. I don't remember what it was. Someone, what he's was oh, talking uh, about. Oh, Spanish. Yeah, <laughs> my mom is actually a Spanish teacher. That's pretty cool. But as you know, when your mom is a Spanish teacher, you are not. You don't speak properly Spanish. I understand, but I don't. My mom drinks like erva mate all day long. <laughs> Someone asked. <me. laughs> yeah. So we are really anxious. At really, yeah. people make fun because they say really, really all the time. They say really. <laughs> but yeah, just the way it is. Just, I, mean, like, I, I say that in Portuguese the same way. Yeah. yeah, but one thing we are excited about is the mast. But the mast is something that we have someone work with us to assemble the mast. And right now, he already wanted us to go like tomorrow to start us finish the mast. But I'm not, yeah, we are like, we have like double thoughts about working with other people right now or not working with other people. Yeah. But the mess is a huge step for the boat to get ready. It's just, you, you, it's a sailboat. A mess is a big thing, right? But we skip, we, you, you skip the question. Why I still... Oh, no, no, no. That's that what I was talking about. I, I get lost sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> we have already 934 people. So maybe some of you never heard of our boat. So I want to explain what boat we have because we still get questions. What model is the boat you're working on? So basically, the boat we are working on is a boat that was designed by French designers that are Joubert and Nivelle from Meta Boatyard, Meta, Meta Boatyard. That's a really, really famous boatyard for metal boats for the past 40 years. So they're really good at steel boats and aluminum boats. But the boat was not built in France. The boat was built in Brazil in the late 80s, beginning of 90s, like in between 80s and 90s, a company go, called Dinieppe that was not actually a boatyard. It was a company that used to make machines. I have no idea. I never found out why, but they decided to build a few boats. So they ordered the layout, the design from France, and they start building this boat. They built, I think, something in between. We 10, don't know, actually. <laughs> I believe it's like 10 to 15 boats. But the thing is, even though they are not a boatyard, the precision of the build is just amazing because they work with a lot more precision than a boat that's something big. So that means that the quality of the build is so, so good. And then what 
the motto is. The motto is called Ginepe Trotsky 1200. Wow. You can write down. It's easier. Yeah. Okay. So it's a uh, 13 and a half meter long by four meter beam. And we have a center board. That means that our draft is one 1.1 meter to 2.7 meters with the center board down. It's a, it's a swing center board. Uh, it's a metal boat. Uh, we always say that's a galvanized boat. People say that hot galvanized boat. People say that there is not such a thing as a hot galvanized boat because you. There is a car. Hmm. Yeah, I can hear someone is on the street. Yeah, so basically, people say that it cannot be hot galvanized because there's no such a such a big tank to put a hole of a boat inside of a tank to hot galvanize it. It's actually a sprinkle hot galvanization. That means that it's like, how do I explain it? The, they, some people say that the right term is not galvanization, is metallization. That basically is to sprinkle hot metal on the top of the metal. So you, you just melt a different metal right in front, that's zinc, to protect from rust. And that's probably the reason why the boat is in such a good condition after 22 years on the hard, because this treatment, this galvanization, even if you break the, the, the layer of galvanization, it helps not to spread the rust. That means that if you have like a, a spot with rust, it won't spread as quick as a regular steel boat. Can I? So someone asked, where are the other boats? We actually don't know. Which other boats? The other ones that are the same as ours. Oh, we, we, we know a few. Yeah. We know a few. There, there is one in the Caribbean. There is one in Bahia here in Brazil. That's there are two in the Caribbean. Sale, two in the Caribbean. Yeah. And there's there another, is in, another Ubatuba. One in Ubatuba. Maybe two. That's coming to the same marina as No, no, this one. Yeah, that's the smaller. But the same boat yard. The same boat yard. Yeah, right started. now there is another two for sale. One in Brazil that is in Bahia. Bahia. That's from a friend of a friend of ours. And there is also one in Panama from an Argentinian guy that is the first owner. He been sailing this boat for over 35 years. He was our plan B. So we were in contact with him. And now he's a friend because whenever I have a question about the boat, that's the guy I WhatsApp and I call him in a... And that's the guy I talked to if I had any question because he knows the boat inside out. He was on the boat yard for a few years, so he really knows the boat. And other than that, there was another one in the Caribbean that I guess it was sold. Um, There's or two one in Panama, Fabio. There's another one in Panama that when we bought this boat was in our marina, and the guy just got to Panama to visit his family because his family is from Panama. So this is the other one that's in Panama. And there is one that is smaller than ours that. A uh, the son of our friend just yeah. bought, and they are coming to our marina yeah. to refit this boat. Yeah, that's, that's a funny. Cool. Yeah, that's a funny story. When we bought the boat the first week, there is a restaurant in the marina. You guys might know. We eat on the restaurant every day, and one day we are sitting just the two of us, and then a guy shows up, and we're like, "You are the son of a bee that bought my son's boat." I'm like, "What? No, we bought our boat." It's like, "No, because my my I, my son wanted to buy this boat for a long time, but the owner never wanted to sell." Blah 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 blah. blah. And then we became friends with this guy that actually owns another boat by the same designer as ours, built on the same boat yard, but in aluminum. That's a different model. That's called, I don't remember the model, but it's like a 42 foot, not center cockpit, after cockpit. And he now convinced his son, his son just bought another one just like ours, but smaller, instead of 44 feet, he's a 38 feet. And he's gonna move, as soon as the marina opens up, he's gonna move to our marina to actually refit this sailboat that's really similar to ours. And his dad said that we have the biggest fleet of Joubert Nivelles from South America. He always jokes, it's funny. Yeah. So are we, are we happy with the refit or we, nowadays we would buy a, just a new one? No, not at all. I mean like, some, <laughs> so I, I answered someone, I, I think I tried to answer, but the Instagram delayed my message and then I was just too long to write again, like yesterday, saying that someone from other channel just refit his boats much quicker and went saving. I'm like, of course, people think different. Each, if you are happy with refitting really quick and leaving, it's fine. It's just different ways of thinking. And we actually enjoy the process of refitting. We, of course, we are looking forward to sailing and we would love to go sailing soon. But we also enjoy the refit. We also enjoy the process of transforming something that was just 
almost garbage, not garbage, but I mean, I like, was just like sitting there without no one taking care of it into something that we love, into our future home, into the home we dream with. So we are, I mean, like, just... We are actually looking for a boat to refit because the yeah. first idea, Duca had the idea of building a boat from the scratch. Just start a new project and build everything. And I said to him, we would take like 10 years to start sailing. So let's find a boat that's halfway. Yeah. At so, least we have like a blank canvas to work. So the idea was... Canvas to work. So the idea was to find a boat to refit. So in this way, we can know the boat. We can like... We yeah, can yeah. pay for the boat because it's cheaper to yeah. buy a, a boat that we need to refit than a new one. Someone asked if it, the price was the of the refits like we thought or uh, it's more than we thought a little bit more because we are also doing more i mean like what i need an interesting one question before i forget someone the other day asked did we what would we do different is there anything you regret on the refit what would you do different the thing is it's hard because we grew you know like we grew the size of the refit along the way so we didn't know seven months ago that we were actually going to get a new mess. We didn't know, I don't know, that we would do a lot of things to the boat that we were actually doing. Like six, seven months ago, we didn't know we would open the diesel tank. And that was a huge project. We didn't know we would open the water tank. So that means that as we change along the way, that made harder for some of the projects, for example. We didn't know we were going to change the mess. If we knew, maybe we would not paint the boat right away when we arrive yeah. because I think that's the biggest regret. It's coffee. <laughs> Someone asked. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> the biggest regret because painting the hole made a lot of things harder because we don't, we cannot make any big uh, change to the deck layout and to the hardware layout of the deck for saving for the mess. And that would make life a lot easier if we had not painted the boat. I think if we would do it all over again, the first thing we would do is just to study so much of the sailing, yeah. of the rigging, and decide the layout we want and the chains we want, and would make life a lot easier to actually do these chains instead of doing now. For example, we are doing not related to sailing directly, but in stainless steel projects. We have like a new uh, arch on the cockpit. We have new railings. All that would be easier if we didn't paint the deck because now we, everything we do, we need to take care of the deck. We need to think about the deck. The deck gets dirty. We don't want that. Mm, just uh, the coffee we are drinking is the one that we we got from the company that we did a merchandising uh, some weeks ago. Video, yes. <laughs> a sponsor video. They are pretty good. Yes. Yeah, so, some people criticize us for that, but to be honest, why would you say no? To do a sponsor video and so, drink good coffee for like a few months because we have coffee for like three months easily. So <laughs> someone thanks, asked guys. about if we were lucky with the sponsorship. We got some sponsorships when we went to Mayan Boat Show. We think we got, yeah. but then the coronavirus came and we are in hope for the some of, yeah the we, we are. I think some partnerships it's uh, like not in hold, but it's gonna take a little bit longer yeah. to get what we need. But I mean, like, it is what it is. So, like the batteries, if we had a deal with battle, uh, we battle still have work. the battery is going to happen, yeah. but, but we don't know now, if it's going to happen next yeah. month or in six yeah. months because this crazy but times. Now the, the worms. And there are more yeah. important yeah. things to think about right now worldwide than our batteries. So, just, yeah. You know, so the idea now is to install the batteries we had bought for the boat before when we started the refit they are acid lead, 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 yeah just regular batteries regular marine batteries so the idea is to install this one and then in the we future we can change and we actually can do a comparison that's good yeah <laughs> the, w one thing we've been working on i mean i she was doing subtitles for tomorrow's video yeah. uh, for next week's video i was working today all day long with fred Remember, we always talk about Fred, our good friend, that is actually refitting a boat on the next marina. He's refitting a Bruce Roberts 54 made out of wood in Holland uh, many years ago. And Fred actually was with the guy that we met at lunch that day that was complaining that we bought his son's boat. They were together and we became really good friends with him also. And we were today all day long talking about our electrical layout for the boat because we are going to, that's one thing that's holding us a little bit. Is because we have more 
power necessity than the former owner in my way of seeing. So we have more batteries than he used to have. And he even questioned us about that because he's like, I saw you put more batteries on the boat, but then the the, the alternator is not the alternator is not going to be enough, and these and, and of course with more batteries comes a lot of other chains, and we are right now thinking about these chains, and one of the big chains is that as we have a metal boat, we need to be really really careful about electrolysis on the hull, about corrosion on the hull, and that usually happens when you are on shore power on a marina because of the ground of other boats and there's a huge problem about that and the way you fix the ground problem when you're on shore power on any boat even more on a metal boat is by having a insulator transformer that's basically a transformer that isolate the boat from the ground of the marina and we do have one on the boat the boat already had one but we right now are rethinking on the size of the transformer because we think that's not going to be enough for what we have on the boat. Someone asked if we're going to live on the boat. Yes, we are going to live on the boat. And that's why we need such amount of energy. Yeah, because we work with internet. Uh, this is our passion. This is our dream project. That's our dream life. But it's also our job. That's how we pay for the whole thing is by doing videos and by editing videos i mean like sometimes 12 hours in one day editing or sometimes even more so we need power to recharge batteries from cameras from drones and the whole thing so we, energy is really important on the boat uh, how old we are we are 36 years old both. i mean yeah. which you most know <laughs> we're April. April. yeah it's 36, yeah, 36. <laughs> so how old she's gonna be 37 in august doesn't she look like 37 hey. i was 40. So someone asked about gel coat. We didn't use it. No, nope. it's not. It's not fiberglass boat. We we use paint to treat the metal. We use a paint called Intershield 300 from International. That's a really good treatment for the metal because there is a really strong mechanical bound with the metal, and also it holds really well impact and like. It's they use on inside of ships, so that means you put a lot of weight inside and on the top of it, and it's hard to break the layer. So we like this kind of paint, and then we just have a primer for the ant falling and ant falling that we didn't paint yet. Uh, if we send blessed the tip, the lids of the tank, we did send blessed. We sent blessed the lids of the diesel tank, but not the water tank because the water tank will, will they were pretty good, so it was cheap just to send by hand. And yeah, to apply the, the paint. Yeah, the reason why we uh, we send best the diesel leads is because they had more corrosion, and when you have more corrosion, it's hard to get the the deep inside of every little hole, so it's harder to take a hundred percent, and that's only sand blessing. And as we have a guy that has a sand blessing machine on the next marina, we became friends with him. He we do a lot of jobs with him, so he sent best to us. We. Mm. If we have any codes in Brazil, like strict codes for time shipping on tiny house or shipping on tiny house as they have in US, no. In it's, Brazil, the code it's the is same just, code as a regular house. Yeah, you just treat as a regular house. So it's the same way as just building any house. I mean, like uh, maybe three years ago, they sometimes complain that you're using a shipping container, but I think right, right now um, it's, it's fine. It's I think now it's okay. Uh, when we are planning to go to the war, I think it's one of the most asked questions. I'm, I'm going to read to you why we're not in the water yet. I, I prepare a list today. A list of things that we still have to do. I'm going to read a list of everything we still have to do. Not 100% of these need to be on the dry. Could be when we are on the water. After I read the list, I explain why and not going right away to the water. Some of them we need to hire people to do. We don't have the skills for this. And some of them we are going to do by ourselves. A lot of them we are going to do by ourselves. But we see. Mast. So, mast. What, in which point of the mast are we? We already installed all the mast steps. We already installed all the winches. We already installed all the clutches. We installed the batting car. We did install VHF antenna. We did install the Windex, we didn't install the wind vane for the electronics, we didn't install the halyards, and we didn't install the spreaders. That's what we need. And we didn't install the cables, the wires 
for installing the mess. And we didn't put the mess in place. <laughs> yeah. But the mess is the least problem because we have someone working with us that's really good. It's, I, in my opinion, the best in Brazil. And he, his shop is inside of our marina. That means that he is always there for us. Yeah. Anytime we need help, he's there. He helps us every single day. Even when we were in the States that we had questions about the mess, I would call him, he would go to the mess, take pictures, send me the pictures. Yeah. He's he's just awesome. Okay, he, we need to so, uh, halfway of the, have 30 minutes more. Okay, <laughs> so we need to exchange, as we said, all the hose, all the valves. These are gonna be our next test. Yeah, as the toilets, we already bought two toilets, two new one, toilets. One is manual and the other one is electronic. Why are we exchange toilets? Because the old one was just falling apart. Every time you touch, something breaks and it's them. more expensive to buy all the parts and separate, separate and then just buy two new ones. We might exchange faucets. We are not sure. We are we're gonna sure. we are gonna think about that. We need to give at least a, a big clean on the faucets. We need to give maintenance to the stove and to the oven. That's gas, regular gas. If we as soon as we exchange to lithium, we are gonna go electric induction, electrical induction cooking in the like oven, but before that, we are not gonna go do it. So we are gonna fix what we have for now. We need to install all the pressure pumps. That means two pressure pumps. That's let's, let's try to, to be quick. Yeah. yeah. So pressure pump is one for salt water and one for fresh water. We are gonna talk in details when we start doing this. Bilge pumps, we need to install three bilge pumps. And that means that we need to pass the wire because there was no electrical. Oh, yeah. We just had one electrical bilge pump. We're going to have three. So we need to do a lot of wiring for the pumps. We need to close the water in the diesel tank. About the electric motor, we are planning for the future, not now. Yeah, We, we are uh, going to use the engine that we have for now. Replace a few engine hose, uh, just a few ones. What else? Install batteries back. We are anxious to install all our batteries back yeah, and we, to have lights. We need to ex uh, exchange the insulator transformer that we talked already. We need to install short power that we have, but it's really old. We need to install new short power. We need to install the charger, inverter, and solar panel that we showed you already from Zen Tracks that we are anxious to install so we can use the batteries. We need to install deck hardware. That means that the Genoa Tracks, we need to install the clutches on the cockpit. We need to install some, things, yeah, wow. some r cables, organizers. What else? The the dodger. We are gonna wait for when we go to the water. We are gonna not. Do, no, we are not gonna do anything about yeah. the dodger now. It, we need to install a stern deck because we have a wooden deck on the stern oh, yeah. that we need that in order to get in and out of the boat. We will make life a lot easier. We need to make a new one. So the plan, the, the first plan was to do this when we get in Florianopolis, but as we are here and as we have time and we have a good wood worker inside the marina, we are planning on doing this platform now here in the marina. And as we are going to do that, we decide to probably do here also the, the seat seats. for the cockpits yeah. and the floor for the cockpit because yeah. when it's Life's wet, you can sleep easier. really yeah. easy. Uh, we need to install the steering wheel again back and to install the cables for the quadrant back. We need to fix the stair that goes inside the boat, the companionway stairs. Ooh, the companionway stair. Yeah, it's falling it's apart. Seems like uh, something that we could do later, but it's dangerous to go down because it can just divide apart and we need to glue back in place. Uh, I'm gonna finish the stainless steel. So we need to finish the arch for the cockpit. Two arts, actually. We need to finish the railing. We need to finish the anchor support. We have a few stainless steel projects to finish. We need we, to paint the center board. That's not. Painted. We need to exchange the not the, exchange uh, replace, replace the cable for the center board. That's gonna be a dynamo. Dynamo, yeah. So by the way, we bought all the cables already. Yeah, there. Except the <laughs> center board. Yeah, the center board we didn't buy yet, but the, all the rest we have already. Uh, we need to apply anti falling paint, paint and, the and the prop speed, speed paint. And the propeller. We need to install... Well, the prop speed is going to be one of the, the, the next projects. Yeah, one of the next projects is prop speed, and we have a surprise with that. Yeah. We're going to know <laughs> soon. We are going to give one of you guys a prop speed kit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we are going to write for a prop, speed, a prop speed kit. Oh, and talking about the hole, a lot of people ask about... So we are not going to install... Anodes, of course, you're going to stop. Yeah, we have on the boat, I think, 12 or 13, 13. anodes, yeah. big ones. 
So we have all them, we bought all the nodes already. We just need to put in place and screw. So we need to install all the nodes. Do you have um, emergency steering? Yes, we do. Yeah, it's a one that goes, mm -hmm. it's a tiller that goes from the shaft of the rudder all the way to the cockpit. So it's a really, it's like maybe two meters uh, it's tiller. Big. It's huge. It's inside the viewer. And the other good thing is that we have, we are really curious to try. We have a wind vane from Aris. Yeah. And the wind vane actually works through another tiller that's a really short tiller on the back. And that means that if we break the cable for the steering wheel, the wind vane would still work because it's directly to the shaft. That means that there is no need for the cable. It's just straight on the shaft. So it's good. So about the sales, we were talking with UK sales, as you know, but with we don't. We, it's just, we, we just, we cannot do. It's just we on hold right now. With them, so the sales we don't know how yeah, we are, it's gonna work. I mean, like still on conversation, we are not sure yet if you're gonna make in the states or you. We are, it's just, right now it's out of control. Canvas, we are still working. For now, we are gonna use just what we have. What came to the with the boat? The canvas. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, For like now? yeah. No, but I said that after we read everything, we say what's now, what's later. Okay. Otherwise, it's too confusing. <laughs> yeah. So we like sewing, sewing, like making things with fabric. So we plan to exchange all the canvas by ourselves. As she said, we might do it when we are on the water. But right now, it's just have more important things to do it. So the list is over, actually. It's hard dodger. No. The fabric is in our canvas. Hard, you said hard dodger. Oh, say I said something. <laughs> Yeah, I we. <laughs> yeah, I always dream of having a hard dodger. It's <laughs> it's not something that we already decide one hundred percent, but we are dreaming with a hard dodger. It's the, the first step of everything is to dream about it, I think and then after we, that, I think if we were able to build a bathtub, we can build a hard dodger. <laughs> yeah, so maybe <laughs> we, we might. In, in, so basically, this list not necessarily, or we are going to do everything here. We might do some of these things when we we are on the water. But that when, doesn't mean that we are not going to do here because sometimes, like, we something that we need to do here, we need to wait for a little while and then we have time to do other things. So sometimes we're going to do projects that we could do after, but right now we can do it here. So, so why not do it here? When we are going to do work? Before this crisis, like two weeks ago, our plan was two to three months again. Yeah. yeah like two to three <laughs> Every months. Every time someone asks, we say two months. Yeah. If we keep saying two months. <laughs> every time <laughs> at one point we go to the water but honestly we believe that two to three months we would be able to go to the water but right now we don't know because like some things might take longer than it was supposed to hopefully in three months we go to the water where are we going to go after we go to the water uh, the first plan was to go to our city but we don't know <laughs> anymore <laughs> i mean yeah just planes change life changes we don't know yeah. Uh, a lot of people are asking about kids. Kids. Uh, we never talked about this, but I've actually we are planning on having kids for 10 years. It's going to be 10 years in July, I guess. Yeah. We've been trying to have kids for 10 years already. Yeah. So Duca had a surgery in 2012. I got a surgery in 2014. I have endometriosis. I don't know if you know what it is. Yeah. It's a condition that's really hard to have kids. So last year we tried, we did a insemination. In vitro insemination. In vitro, I think. Yeah, in and vitro it didn't work. So we might try again next year. Yeah. I mean, if you know. After easier. the coronavirus, yeah. after the, the whole crisis, we are going to try it again. We don't know Yeah. when it's going to be. But we are going to give one more try. At some point, yeah. late after the boat's ready, not right now. If happens, happens. If it doesn't happen, we're going to wait more. Yeah. Basically, yeah. That's life. We are 36 years old now, so yeah. that's it. <laughs> so, so any other let's questions? let change subject. Um, uh, ah, if we have sale experience. So oh, a lot of people ask. We talked about that this already. Uh, Duca has been sailing since he was a kid. Uh, is that yes, to have a sailboat? It depends on what you consider sailing experience. Mm -hmm. I don't have offshore sailing experience. Yeah. I've been around boats for my whole life, probably. My family, she's from the same town. So basically, I've always been around boats. My dad sailed 
he was 15. So we had our family boat from when I was like 10, 12 until I was 20 something. So it was our summer house was a sailboat, but I was young. I used to sail with the family, not by myself. That's completely different to having your own boat and being your own captain of the boat. We had two boats before this one. So that's our third boat. Uh, but it was a much smaller boat. The first boat was a 19 foot. Then we bought a 26 foot. That was like four or five years ago. Five years maybe. Yeah. <laughs> we had a lot. Yeah. Lots so we, had, our last boat was 26 foot boat. That was probably like three, not three, maybe four, four to five times lighter than the boat we had. No? <laughs> yeah. So that means that it's a huge step for us, but we're committed to learn. We, yeah. we, I mean, like, if you really want, you can learn anything. I think the only experience, like, offshore that we have, that I have, is when we went to Polynesia in 2014, the beginning yeah. of 2014, we went from Morea to Huahini and then to Bora Bora, and he's the friend of his brother. Yeah, my brother. Boat. <laughs> yeah, my brother in 2014 did the crossing from Panama to Galapagos yeah. and Galapagos to Tahiti, to Morea with his friend that bought a James Warham, that's a wooden catamaran, 35 feet catamaran. Yeah. That's a really, really crazy different boat. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there is not even a head. There, there's an, the, the head is on the cockpit. It's just a hole. Yeah, okay. so it's like, it's basically a really, really different boat. And, and we went there to visit my brother's friend in 2014, and we sailed from Morea to Bora Bora on this boat. And other than that, we don't have much, uh, I mean, like I did one crossing in Brazil that's like three days crossing with a friend, with a catamaran oh, also, catamaran, like maybe yeah. three years ago. But other than that, we don't have much uh, ocean experience, like crossing experience, but we have a lot of friends that do. We know people that we can bring on board with us so we can learn and it's just a learning process. And that's the reason why we want to stay in the Brazilian coast, at least for the first year, just to get to know our coast. That's a really long coast even and get to now, learn more. Even more now that nobody knows how it's going to be to sail for other places yeah. in the world. So it's better to be here. Closer. Yeah, I mean, like, I think you take on babe steps. We lead from here. We do like one day crossing. And then after a month, we do like a two days crossing. And then we do a week crossing. And we, we start growing slowly. I, I, it's just, I mean, like. We have all the time in the world right now. Yeah. <laughs> Back when we had the other boats, our problem was time because I was at the university, she was working, I was also working. So we would sail two days and be like, we need to go back because we have class. We need to go back because we have work. And now our work is the boat. So that's so the much plan, better now. Yeah, the plan is to stay in Brazil and then go to the Caribbean and then we don't have plans. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe to the United yeah. States, maybe G to Canada. Canada maybe if you give us an idea, we might do it. Uh, are we gonna have AI? I, A I S? Yes, we not are gonna have. We already had bought actually. <laughs> we bought all the electronics already. We didn't show you, we didn't install it, but we have all new electronics. I A I S. We have a new autopilot. We have sharp plotter. We have radar. We have the whole pack, the whole thing, because we, it's just, yeah, we safety. We are gonna show when we are in, gonna install them, so yeah. <laughs> there is no need of. Showing her? Showing her? Uh, we are. What are your previous career here? Career? Yes, we uh, are both engineers. I'm a sanitary environmental yeah, engineer, and he's actually a civil engineer, civil engineer and also really business. True. Yeah, I, I, my first degree is business, is not engineering. I went back to the universe to do a civil engineering degree when I was 27. That means by the time I finish is when I quit. quit to start YouTube. So that means I haven't, even though I can be an engineer, I'm not really an engineer. I have a course, I have a diploma, I have a, a paper that say, <laughs> says that I can sign something, but this is not real. Uh, watermaker. We don't we don't have watermaker now, yes. but we plan to have in the future, but we don't know when. Yeah, uh, here it's really expensive to buy, a, oh, I mean, it's expensive to buy anywhere, yeah. but we plan to start traveling and then we buy a water maker in a place that's cheaper than here. That's the go for now. I mean, we have space for it. Um, we need to do the rifle for the sunglasses that oh, <laughs> we didn't do. That's true, yeah. Let's, so, yeah, I don't know if you guys do? watched the video, but we got a pair of sunglasses that we want to raffle between one of our patrons because it's just a way of saying thank you because our patrons is a huge support for us to keep doing what we're doing. So and they help a lot, we are here. A lot because everyone that watches, but also because 
Patreon supporters, and that's pretty good. What we did, we put all the names in here, so they have they have numbers, yeah. and we are gonna rifle a number. So um, we have twenty nine people that are yeah. willing to to win the sunglasses. One number. So for those who are here that don't know what we are talking about, we got a pair of sunglasses from William Painter, and we got one extra for our, so our can, supporters. Yeah. So we are gonna write for now. Yep. Uh, who is the luck winner? I'm. Let's do it. Let's see if I can do it here. No, it's not showing yours. Eleven. 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 So Jim McCrunk. Jim McCrunk, you got a pair of sunglasses. We are not we, gonna show you, uh, send you right away. We need to wait until the, the post office, the post office opens. open. Because, because it's not opening. It's not open right now. So we're gonna say to you, we're gonna we're gonna send you an email <laughs> later, but we are gonna send you as soon as possible. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, any other questions that we didn't answer? Maybe. By even some 4G extender, yeah, we might have a 4G extender. We don't know yet. We are gonna see once we move to the boat. We are gonna see the necessity and what we need, and we, you know, like we can expand slowly with the needs. You know the question there. Ah, about the name of the boat. So the boat's called Odd. Odd. That's just, the name of the just boat. Odd. We we kept just Odd. Yeah. And we already had have the document with the name, and we don't know when we are gonna put the name on the boat. Actually, yeah, that's gonna be the last thing. It's ah, gonna be the last thing for another more. thing. Another thing that we need to do, we need to fix some things on the paint. Yeah, some we, balls that showed up. Some bubbles, just some a few. Bubbles. It's not many, but it's a metal boat. It's tough not to get any trouble on the paint. So we have like a maybe six, seven. But the good news bubbles that, that we, we to... just that have these ones. We, uh, we left the boat on the sun and we have just some small bubbles. We don't yep. have more than this. And by the way, we didn't call Odd Life because Odd Life is too long. <laughs> we want a short name that we can say on the radio really easy. It's odd, O-D-D, it's just really three letters, just much easier. Uh, about the wood inside of the boat, we want to treat them. We are still Definitely. deciding if we are going to use sealant or varnish, varnishing. But, but gonna we that. are going to do that living side. Yes. So it's that, a plan for when we go inside the water. Yeah, we want to do that slowly. We are not going to be on a hurry. We're going to do like maybe the V birth and then we keep moving in different parts of the boat and do it slowly because it's going to make life a lot easier. What time is there? Here is 6.47 p.m. Uh, projects in the water. Any other question? I, I if you have any other question, the ones that I had there are over. <laughs> SV Delos got awesome Wi Fi. Oh, yeah. Uh, we <laughs> we wish, wish we had, had yeah. the Wi Fi they have. Yeah, one day, maybe, one day. When you guys start saving. Yeah, hopefully, in three months we start saving. Hopefully. Um, but don't take our word on that. It's just, just If we are going to do lives more often, Oh, can be. Let us know if can you be. like it. I mean, like that's it's tough today because she's controlling me on time. When we did two patrons that we didn't do translation because everyone speaks English, then life's easier. We did like two and a half hours of life, and then it was much easier to tell stories and to <laughs> make it long. But right now, to the, the the subtitles thing is a huge problem because we're in Brazil and we do need to do subtitles, and then she has a lot of work. Well, we are going to use the engine we have, that's diesel engine. And when we are going to get married, maybe one day when we meet, we are <laughs> together for 13 years Almost when we don't years. need to get married. Yeah, the only reason to get married is if we go to Tahiti because I have Italian citizenship. That means I have two passports and I can stay longer in French Polynesia. She cannot. So if we get married in the Caribbean, maybe she can stay longer with me in French Polynesia. Then yeah. Who asked about the engine, you said? Uh, long time ago. <laughs> yeah, talking about the engine, I don't know if you heard about it, but we have a crazy thought about the engine. We might, yeah, we might want to exchange to an electric engine, but it's not something that we are sure about it. It's just a beginning of a thought, maybe that in the future. What yeah. was the hardest job so far? Hmm. Mm. I'm not sure. I'm not sure either. <laughs> The hardest job so far. 
the, I think the, the hatches maybe. Uh, can be. The, yeah, the hatches. Yeah, the, the problem the, about... Yeah, I can see. There is one hatch that we are still going to need to fix, actually. It's too honest. Yeah. Mm. There is one, the, the forward hatch is too big and it's like, the acrylic is like a little bit like bald. We are not going to exchange right now, but in the future we might need yeah. to exchange that hatch. The hatch, the problem is that need to be perfect. Cannot be half perfect, otherwise it doesn't work. And that was a mm. lot of work in, in the diesel tanks. The diesel tanks. <laughs> diesel For tanks sure. is like uh, the worst. Yeah, I'm so excited that we are over with it. Now we're just scared about closing and sealing properly because it's another thing that needs to be perfect. A diesel tank that's not perfectly sealed is a huge problem. So that's a huge problem. But um, we're gonna solve that. We about our sales. Someone is asking about our sales. The plan we do have right now that came with the boat. We have one Genoa and we have two small storm jeeps. The storm jeeps are not that bad, are okay. They the Genoa, the, the Genoa, they were inside of the boat. The Genoa and the mainsail are much older because they were on the weather for 22 years. That's a lot of time. We rebuilt the entire rigging. We have new mast, new spreaders, new boom, new pole. We have new stays, new turnbuckles new uh, clutches the only old thing we have are the winches so i think it deserves new sales so we are trying to decide which way to go with sales but the plan is to have one main sail with two or three reefs i mean like it's two reefs but maybe we're gonna do three reefs on the sail so we can exchange between like if we, we are in an area with low wind we have two small reefs and then if we go to somewhere that has a lot of wind we take one reef off and just put this in the third one and then we're going to have a big genoa and a smaller genoa maybe 100 percent and 150 percent and then maybe we have a spinnaker like a cruising spinnaker and may and we want to have a storm jeep a really really small storm jeep that we have no state just a soft state that we just roast uh, when we need to use Someone asked if we are going to sail to Sydney and order our Uber Eats or Deliveroo. <laughs> Is there anyone that works in Deliveroo? <laughs> they said Uber Eats, but you used to work for Deliveroo. I used to work for Deliveroo, not Uber Eats. That's the, uh, Uber Eats, uh, Deliveroo got there before Uber Eats. Yeah, but we would love to sail to Sydney. We'd love, no, we will go. To, that's, I have a promise to one of our friends in Sydney that one day we are going to anchor in uh, Hutchcutters Bay and we are going to eat a dinner on the cockpit on Hutchcutters Bay because that is where we sit on the grass and watch all the boats and we just dream about it. So we are planning on having two reefs on the main sail. Two or three, yeah. Two actually, right? Two but two, I just explained the whole thing. Someone is asking again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> answering. <laughs> um, so are you going to use primarily use your sails for traveling? The main sail is not possible to use right now, right? The main sail we are not going to use because, because uh, we, the, the yeah, we just installed the batting car on the mess, and that means we need to, to uh, do change to the sail, and I don't think that sail is worth yeah. to do any change because it's really so. old. So we're going to have yeah. new ones. I don't know if yet if we are going to get them at UK sail in New York or not, or if you're going to get somewhere here in Brazil. We are still deciding all that. Someone asked it. If we want to go to Annapolis in October, we would love to go. Yeah, we, we were planning on going yeah. and we already making arrangements for that. Yeah. But with this crisis, I don't even know if there is going to be an Annapolis show this year. We hope so. And if there is an Annapolis boat show, we are willing to go. It's like 95% sure we yeah. will go <laughs> if there is the show. We were planning, we met learning the lines and also Solianis. 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 and we are planning on maybe getting an airbnb all together like maybe big brother <laughs> <laughs> that's an idea i mean like we, we still need to see if the show is gonna happen or not yeah are you gonna sail around the world we would love to this yeah, was the, the plan but we don't know i mean like the 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 the, the concept of circumnavigation it's something that we, if we say like, oh, our plan is to do a circumnavigation, that means we have a project that has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And that's not what we are looking for. We are looking for a project that there is a beginning, and there is the 
continuation. A continuation. <laughs> it's just like lifelong going that until we are happy. We want to talk yeah. only when we're not happy of doing what we are doing. That means that eventually might happen a circumnavigation, but that's not the goal. The goal is to go from one port to the other until we are not excited anymore. Or show the Caribbean is between these ports. Oh, no, the Caribbean, the is, Caribbean the, is, is the first place after right Brazil. Yeah, as yeah. soon as you leave Brazil, you probably go to the Caribbean. That's the, the first stop. Uh, why the former owner abandoned the boat? My theory is that he was someone that was doing way too many things to have a boat to take care of, even though he loved the boat. I don't know if we told that before, but the former owner of this boat is someone that is in love with Antarctica. <laughs> so basically, he's a fan, I guess, of er Ernest Shackleton, yeah, you know, the guy yeah. that walked to the center, tried to walk to the center of Antarctica. So his life dream was to walk to the center of Antarctica, and he attempted three times the to walk all the way from the coast of Antarctica to the center of Antarctica, carrying a sled, a uh, carbon fiber sled that he built so he could sleep inside. And he did that three times. The closest he got was like 700 kilometers in the continent. So he walked 700 kilometers and need to ask for, uh, how do you call it? Rescue? Because yeah. the weather was terrible and he was almost losing a finger, a toe. Yeah, he was almost losing a toe because it was frozen. So then he came back. This guy, for the past 22 years, he went to Antarctica 13 times, according to him. That means someone that goes to Antarctica with other boats 13 times has no time to take care of his own boat. And he also had two daughters and he grew a family and changed. The plans changed and the boat was there, but he didn't want to sell because he loved the boat until we found out about the boat and about him. So we contact him two days before we already bought the boat psychologically. So we, first we bought the boat psychologically, and then I contact him saying that I wanted to buy his boat, and we convinced him to sell his boat. During and hopefully, he's excited about what we are doing. During this quarantine, I wrote the. Uh, you read. Read his book. <laughs> yeah, he has a book that actually has a chapter about our boat. That's yeah. pretty cool. And yeah, uh, we don't really know if he watches all the videos. We hope he likes what we are doing. We know he doesn't agree with 100% of what yeah. we are doing. I think he wish we were on the water already because he, when he bought this boat, was a similar situation. The boat was neglected for like two years, but on the water, not on the dry. And he refit the boat with his wife for over two years. And then he, they spent eight months doing the Brazilian coast all the way to Bahia and came back. I think maybe he regrets of spending two years in the boatyard and only eight months sailing. And he might be afraid that we were going to do the same. But I don't believe we are going to do the same. And it's hard not to do all the things we are doing as the boat was sitting for too long. Like, how don't you open the diesel tanks? It's just 22 years is 22 years. Yeah, it's the not, rudder and the diesel tanks. I mean, like, it's, yeah. The, I don't. the book is in Portuguese. That doesn't mm. make sense to say the name because it's even hard to find. Yeah, I don't think you can find it right anymore. Now. Yeah, he gave us when we bought the boat. Yeah. And we gave our book to him because we have a book house. <laughs> Took a, took a picture. But, yeah. uh, there is a, a fish. Yeah, I, me and a friend, he did all the texts and I did the pictures. We did a photography book, like a hardcover photography book. That was 2009 years ago. 11. About a kind of fishing that's a typical kind of fishing in our hometown, in our island in the south of Brazil. So it's the only uh, book about this kind of fishing. It's really cool. So we gave one him. Do you know where I can find a boat the same as yours? I do know. You can send <laughs> us an email at oddlifecrafting yeah. at gmail.com. We have a guy that is called Andres. He's from Argentina. He has one in Panama. And he knows a lot about his boat. He's been sailing this boat for over 35 years. And he's selling the boat. And he's but a really nice guy. Announced, he's so not you, you, you won't find anywhere. anywhere. We know because I found an old ad like, yeah. from years ago. And I contacted him and we became friends. Are you going to learn how to kite surf? He loves I, kite surfing. Seriously? I'm not learning. I'm too. I kite uh, surf how for. How can I say yeah, I, yeah, I, mean, I don't know how to coordinate hands and feet yeah. and wing. Yeah, I mean, I've been kite surfing for the past nine years. I mean, like for the That's past the three reason. years, I, I've been not kite surfing because Actually, of the channel. Yeah. This is one of the reasons we are into sailing because yeah. 2011, Duca discovered kite, kite surfing, surf. and after a year, I decided to get. Now, to after a year, he wanted me. Convinced me to uh, to go sing with him to spend more times to more time together, and he wanted to buy a hobcat. 
And I told him that I would love to have a, a small house inside the water, and that's why we started small sailboat, yeah. sailing. <laughs> yeah, but I've been kiting for nine years. I love kiting. I always say that if you never kite before, you need to do it. The first year of kite surfing is probably the best year of anyone's life. After that, you get used to it, and it's not as much fun as the first year, but the first year is just amazing. And right now, I kite like once a year because yeah, we are working yeah, a lot yeah. and we just you know, I don't have the time. So, how is the tiny house? The tiny ship tiny house? The, the house is there in our city. We Getting had old. a plan of <laughs> doing a lot of things, but while we are here now, we are changing plans and we are planning on doing things simple. So, in the, in the past, we were thinking about having a washing machine underneath the sink on the bathroom. And now we are planning on not having a washing machine. We yeah. are planning on just put the sink there and we are getting things simple to have. To, to be, be quick and to have a place to stay. Yeah. Uh, basically what some people think we should do with the boat, just finish uh, somehow and then just use the boat. To the house, we are almost doing that. You're just gonna do less things that we were supposed to. The idea, in the beginning, the idea was just to fix the boat and go there and finish the house and then leaving the house and finish the boat. But now plans changing, uh, changed. And when we are thinking on getting the boat ready to be sailed and to no, sail, to sail, yeah, not to sail as soon as possible, not to sail, to sail, to sail, to sail as soon as possible. So we won't be spending that much. Time in the house. Anyway. Yeah, the, the plan is to do off season, off sailing season to build the house is slowly with no hush. So we've been working on the boat so hard not to enjoy the boat a little bit after we are done. So the idea is to enjoy for at least like six months and then we can work a little bit on the house and then we can go back to the boat and work a little bit on the house and go back to the boat. That's the plan. So what's the plan for now? And uh, we need to finish this because it's already one of subtitles that I'm <laughs> gonna need to type in Portuguese and Spanish <laughs> this week. Yeah. Uh, the plan for which plan you said? The plan now. No, so the plan now is tomorrow, to finish the as yeah. soon as possible the mast and the stainless steel. So tomorrow we are gonna like. start going to the marina. We are in my sister's apartment right now here in Guarujá, that's the same city as the marina is. So the plan is to start going to the marina using the stairs instead of the elevator, not contact anyone, wearing masks, and con to have contact with less, less people, people as possible. possible. Yeah, the plan is to work on the mask, to finish the mask, to finish the stainless steel, to finish the hydraulics for, for water and pumps, and to finish the electrical systems. After that, we are pretty much I think ready to go to the water with a few more things. Our house in Florianopolis is in downtown, close to the Beramar shopping, Duca's land. Yeah, it's right downtown. It, when you arrive in the land, when you cross the bridge to the land, you'll see a mountain right in front of you. It's on the top of that mountain. And I guess that's it, guys. Yeah. Guys, we really we, appreciate. If you like Thanks the so, lives, so much. we can try to yeah. do more lives. Let us know what you think about the lives. Sorry that uh, we could not talk more today because one hour is a lot for us to work, I mean, for her to work later. We want to thank a lot all the super chat, all the donations. We really appreciate that. It's not because we didn't say your name right away. We don't appreciate. We 100% appreciate you guys are awesome. Yeah. You support us so much that's unbelievable. It's unbelievable the amount of nice people out there that wants to support us and to help us to get to where we dream of it, to get the boat on the water. That's just Thanks so much. We really appreciate. And sorry that I say really, really, because I just, it's just the way it's, I'm excited. <laughs> Even in Portuguese, you always say this. Yeah. And let us know if you like the live chat. We can do that maybe once a month if you think that's a good thing. Don't forget that this was not our weekly video. This no. was an extra video. We are going to have a weekly episode tomorrow. So feel free to come back tomorrow, 10 o'clock Brazilian feel time. Feel free to morning. give us ideas of what to do for an episode because we might run out of content yeah. sometimes. Yeah, let us know if there's anything we would like to know about the boat and anything we could shoot an episode in the apartment about the boat. Other than that, it's just, I mean, it's just life. You, it, things happen and we need to adapt. And right now we're trying to adapt to this whole situation and to, to try to make the best of it. Yeah. And hope everyone is safe. Take care. <laughs> Stay at home for now, at least. And we see you guys. We see you soon. Someone tomorrow. said about doing uh, once a month. Like, maybe. 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 Yeah, we, we always 
wanted to try, but we were afraid of trying. But it was really cool. Yeah, but it's really good. Yeah. <laughs> guys, thanks so, thanks much. so much. We'll see you tomorrow in the morning or some more time for you guys because <laughs> I don't know where you live, but see you guys tomorrow. See you.